as borders are. Kamala Harris let in over 20 million. They're now saying the number could be 25 million illegal aliens from 168 different countries. Most people don't even know that you have that many countries coming from prisons and jails, insane asylums and mental institutions, and terrorists at a level that we've never seen before. You know, I told this a few times. Uh, we were, during the Border Patrol is fantastic, and ICE, and our whole thing with the police officers, they're all, these are people that are brave and great, and they really want to do their job. But they came out with the Border Patrol, a study on terrorism, and they said, in 2019, my year, they said not one terrorist came into the country. Now, I don't really believe that. It can't be that good. It can't be, because now we have thousands coming in. But the fact that they'd even say that, and they didn't do it for me, they just did a report. They said, not one terrorist. 2019, check it out. They said not one terrorist came into the country. Now we have thousands and thousands and thousands of terrorists pouring into our country at record levels. And it's going to end very badly. It's going to end very badly. We got to get them the hell out of here. We got to get them out of here fast. What they've done in allowing maybe 25 million people into our country, it should be illegal. They're destroying. It should be illegal. Maybe it is illegal. They're destroying our country. They're ruining our country. In Aurora, Colorado, entire apartment complexes are being taken over by armed Venezuela gangs with weapons the likes of which even the military doesn't see. They're terrorizing residents and they're just menacing the whole state. But they are menacing that community and the people are petrified. Even the sheriff, he's trying his best, but he's got a small force by comparison. This is like a military force, and they're vicious, violent people. By the way, Venezuela crime is down 72 percent. Crime is down all over the world because they're sending their criminals, not just South America, from all over the world, they're sending their criminals, they're sending people in jail for murder and drugs and everything else. They're sending them into our country. They're getting rid of them. Crime's down all over the world. Our crime is through the roof. And you haven't seen the migrant crime yet. It started and it's vicious, but you haven't seen the extent of it yet. They're just getting settled in. Colorado is a total mess with a governor that has no idea what to do. He has no idea. He's confused. He's afraid of the migrants. But he doesn't want to say it because that's a bad thing to say if you're a Democrat. You know, they put you right out of business. He fears the policies of Kamala but doesn't want to lose his base or his job. He's afraid to say anything about it. Colorado began the threat to democracy against me, where they tried to unconstitutionally remove me from the ballot. I was the leading person in the whole country, leading everybody by a lot. And they said, let's remove him from the ballot. And then they say, I'm a threat to democracy. Think about that. But Colorado was the one that did it, at the behest of the governor, probably. Many people in Colorado were absolutely angry at it. They didn't like it. Even Democrats and liberals, they said, that's terrible. You can't, re you can't do that. Democrats did it. The concept of taking the number one person in the Republican Party by far and taking them off the ballot so that the Republicans don't even have a nominee, because this was very far down the line. The case for me was won at the United States Supreme Court quickly and unanimously. And the governor, Jared Polis, had no idea what to do or say, never apologized, never did anything. The radicals headed up by a radical governor in Colorado that has no clue how to solve this influx of crime into his state. And by the way, Colorado is one state. It's much worse in other states. But in Colorado, they've taken over. I mean, in Colorado, they're so brazen, they're taking over sections of the state. And, you know, getting them out will be a bloody story. Should have never been allowed to come into our country. Nobody checked them. Nobody checked. Were they criminals? Were they from jails? We have them pouring out from jails. We have the worst criminals in all of these countries. 168 so far are registered. 168 countries. They're in our country, and they said, if you come back, you will be executed. You will be killed immediately. Not going to be easy, but we'll do it. But they have no clue how to solve their influx of crime in Colorado or anywhere else. But far more importantly, heading this governor's way are numbers of bad people 
that nobody will ever believe. That's just a little, small group of people that are taking over. These people are tough. I always say they make our criminals look like nice people. At the time it happened, people said, I would win Colorado. Colorado is traditionally not a Republican state. But I was actually tied and leading in polls in Colorado because people were so incensed at what this governor and his cronies had done by trying to strip the Republican Party of their candidate. So if I don't win Colorado, it will be taken over by migrants and the governor will be sent fleeing. Because the people of Colorado should really do something that would be a classic. They should do a major protest vote in favor of Trump to reject the threat to democracy that they caused by an attempt at ballot removal. And Illinois is really the same thing. And Maine, another one, I mean, I don't understand. You know, I did very well in Maine. But they did that. The governors did that. Illinois is one of the worst-run states in the country, headed by a governor, J.B. Pritzker, whose family threw him out of the family business, so he became governor instead. And his state is going to hell. It's horrible what's happening. So if you live in Chicago and your state is going to hell, vote for Donald Trump. Just vote. We'll do a good job. We'll clean it up. We'll get rid of that horrible crime. You know, in uh, Labor Day weekend, Chicago had 117 people shot, 17 died. This is worse than Afghanistan. This is worse than any place. It's a war zone. Other states should also vote for Trump in protest because their way of life has been changed in America. Protest it. Go back to the Democrats in four years, but you won't because we'll clean up this mess. And you'll say, we're never voting for a Democrat. We like Trump and his friends. Migrants and crime are here in our country at levels never thought possible before, never even thought possible. You're not safe even sitting here, to be honest with you. I'm the only one that's going to get it done. Everybody's saying that. I'm starting to believe it myself. But they're saying the only one that's going to get it done, and I will tell you, I'm going to get it done. And so go out and do that protest. If you're Maine, if, you, if, if you're in Illinois, if you're in any state, because you're being overrun by criminals. You're being overrun by people. They're not being checked. They're not being vetted. They're taking over our country. They're forming armies in our country. And Aurora is just one example of many locations. Other places are probably even in worse shape. We just haven't heard about them yet. And a lot of governors don't like talking about it. Like this guy, Polis, he said, no, no, don't talk about it. We don't want the world to find out. The world has found out. The world has found out. They have all the pictures. They have all the, the tape that you want. I've never seen anything like it. They walk in. They throw people out of their apartments. They take over the whole building. Now they take over another building. They're in the real estate business. Isn't that nice? They were in jail two months ago. Now they're in the real estate business in Colorado. Just two days ago, right here in small town Wisconsin, what a beautiful place. However, a member of a savage Venezuela gang was arrested for sexually assaulting a woman and attacking viciously a child. He's charged with suffocation, child abuse, sexual assault, and many other things. Bad guy shouldn't be in the country, came out of jail, came out of jail in his country. I will get these monster criminals out of Wisconsin. I will get them out of our country. We're going to get them out fast. We're going to get them out fast, very fast. They'll soon be back on the streets and jails of Caracas, Venezuela, and other places from where they came. Think of it, though. Venezuela crime is down 72%. People are saying, oh, isn't it wonderful, Venezuela? In fact, if they win, we're never going to lose touch with each other if they win. But we won't come here. It'll be too dangerous. We will have a meeting. We will have a rally in Caracas, Venezuela, because it will be safe by comparison to Wisconsin. OK? So we'll all hop on a flight. We'll go over to Caracas, Venezuela, or one of hundreds of other countries that are safer than the US, because our country is a very unsafe country now. And we're really, we're really subject to what these people want to do. And these are violent people. These are people that were criminals at the worst level in their cities all over the world. 22 people out of the Congo in Africa. It's not just South America. People think it's Honduras and Guatemala, El Salvador, Mexico. 
It's not — it's countries all over the world, they're coming in. Twenty-two people from the Congo in Africa. Where are you from? From the Congo. Oh, that's nice. Where — where did you live? Uh, jail. Oh, what did you do? It's none of your business. That's what they told the people. It's none of your business. You can imagine what it is. But from Africa, from the Middle East, from Europe, from Asia, they're coming in from everywhere. They're getting rid of their criminals. They're bringing them into the United States of America, our beautiful country, our now failing country. It's a failing country under these lunatics. And they br they're bringing them in at levels that nobody's ever seen before. Ron Johnson sees it. He sees it all the time, and he gets sick over it. But we're going to do something about it, Ron. We're going to get it done. We have to. We have no choice. It's not like we have a choice. Not like we can say, oh, well, we'll live with it. You can't live with it because you're going to be killed. You're going to — these are killers. But from all over the world, you take a look at the crime statistics. You take a look at the jail statistics. The jails are being emptied out. The mental institutions are being emptied out and insane asylums. And then the press, when I say Dr. Hannibal Lecter, the press says, oh, why did he mention that? They're wise guys back there, just wise guys. They say he rambled and started talking about Hannibal Lecter. What does that have to do? That's a representative of people that are coming into our country. Dr. Hannibal Lecter, he will have you for dinner. You know that? He will have you for dinner. No, but this is what's happened. This is what's happening at levels that nobody can even imagine. Millions and millions.